Hello, and thank you for choosing the Legacy Lawyers as your source of information. We know this might be a difficult time you're going through, but we are here to educate you and help you through the process. Please stay tuned for our question and answer portion. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, David. How's the week looking so far? Week looks great. It's it's not quite half over, <laughs> but it's been good thus far. Well, that's good to hear. Okay. Okay, so this week we're talking about trust and trust disputes and mm -hmm. just some scenarios to go over. Yes. So for today's scenario, let's say my brother, who is trustee of my deceased father's trust, said he spent $200,000 to renovate our father's house in order to sell it. When I went to the house, it seemed the house had only been repainted. My brother insisted that a lot of work was done, but I feel he is stealing the money. What can I do to recover it? Okay, so I'm assuming that the renovations occurred after dad died. Yes. Okay. Well, as a beneficiary of the trust, you're entitled to accountings. And you're entitled to compel those accountings, and you're entitled to compel the, that those accountings be submitted to court for review. And once you have a court action, you have the power to subpoena documents and to compel the trustee to turn over copies of the documents to essentially prove up the transactions that are in the accounting. There's a lot of confusion over what an accounting is. Um, a lot of folks say, well, I demanded an accounting and I received this sort of spreadsheet, um, but there are no cancel checks attached and there are no source materials such as bank statements attached and no receipts. Accountings don't necessarily come with that stuff automatically. You usually have to compel something through the court process to get those type of materials. So in this situation, you have a lot of the trust assets being spent towards a piece of real property that either doesn't warrant such expenditures or certainly doesn't appear to have benefited from those expenditures. So you would demand an accounting, and if one is not provided, uh, you would compel the accounting. And uh, either way, uh, the accounting in this situation seems like the requesting party would not have reason to trust what's in the accounting because anyone can write entries saying, you know, $5,000 a contractor for whatever, a hundred times. So, Oh, what I see a lot in the accountings is, oh, well, there's these daily trips to Home Depot or daily trips to Costco. Well, Home Depot and Costco have very good return policies. So someone can be going to Costco all the time and saying, well, you know, I think um, I'm going to buy all these building materials, quote unquote, and then I'm going to come back within 14 days and get a full refund in cash, by the way. And I, I see a lot of manipulation like that. You'd be surprised. So you file a petition to compel an accounting. They submit their accounting uh, to the court, which is benefited from being verified under penalty of perjury, in which you can use the civil discovery process, in which you can compel the other party to produce documents that would support their transactions. So if they say, I spent um, $37,500 with ABC uh, Construction Company, you can compel a copy of the invoice. And I've seen accountings in which invoices are produced and they were fabricated. So then you can uh, compel uh, the person working at ABC, or you can compel ABC Construction Company to turn over their documents by subpoena. Uh, worst comes to worst, if it's someone who doesn't keep good records, but it's an individual that runs that company, you can compel them to uh, be in a deposition and provide testimony, and that person may testify, oh, sure, I met this trustee, and we scraped the pool, and you know the most we were ever paid out of this trust was $1,100. Uh, so I'm not, sh and I'm looking at the invoice that you're presenting me at the deposition, and first of all, uh, that is our logo but it appears to be cut and paste onto an invoice which is not how we do things uh, our invoices look completely different by the way here's a copy of our invoice uh, we see things like that a lot so uh, you can you don't have to take the representations at face value uh, you can use the court process to figure it out uh, factually 
by getting source documents and when you go to trial or you go into the hearing in which you're going to actually hear your dispute, uh, you can suggest to the court that these accounting transactions have not been proven and the trustee is unable to prove them because they're false and therefore the trustee should be personally charged with essentially the deficiency that arises out of saying you spent money on something but you really didn't. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. And if you guys have any additional questions, feel free to email us at smm at thelegacylawyers.com. Have a great day. Thank you.